This week, Drew and I discuss what we have been smoking. We'll have some Sagan news, Stogie Geek ratings, and stuff you might need to know. Stogie Geeks, episode 334, starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And we- Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geeks show. I am your host this week, Joe Hosempa. A privilege and an honor to be here. I have a little bit of a somber tone today. I'm having some wine uh, there. But before we get to what I'm drinking and smoking, we got the little dockyard kid from Texas. Mr. Drew Galvin, what's up? Hey, what's going on, Joe? Uh, Just hanging out over here. You know, I'm in my new office over here, so uh, I have to uh, uh, redo my my schedule so that I we can continue doing our show yeah. at this at this time. So, but yeah, no, everything is uh, going very well. Spoke some pretty interesting cigars this past week. Uh, got some new ones in. Uh, got got a bunch of mail. Got a bunch of cigars in the mail. As you got, as everybody saw earlier, if anybody follows me on Facebook or Instagram. So just uh, you know, just enjoying the uh, the uh, cooler weather. We're staying just right below a hundred. So nice. we're in the ni- ninety-seven to ninety-nine. Other than that, man, just it's just having a, having fun and staying healthy and staying safe and looking forward to baseball. Mm. Baseball's coming up, Joe. That's two gonna, weeks. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be Isn't interesting. It? It's, it's did you did, did you send your picture to the Yankees uh, organization so they could put you in the stands? No, because I did. You did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. No, I'm Come not. I, I'm 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 very anti water and stuff down. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm very, I'm very methodical with the business, and yeah. I, I, I think it's cool. It's, it's, a, and they actually, uh, they got that idea. That um, I'm on a, a, a business forum that's over the pond that does a lot of innovative business ideas and test kits and all that stuff. Uh, uh-huh. It's like a business incubator form where people post their business ideas and they get yeah. funding if it's good. You know, it's not like, you know, yeah. it's not like a GoFundMe. Like I'm trying to raise $5,000 because my business sucks and I have no marketing. So I'm going right. to start a GoFundMe. It's like a legit one. I've been following uh-huh. it for years. It's super cool. Uh, Story Geeks, if you're into that type of thing, you can ping me and I'll give you the... Uh, the uh, address you sign up and actually it's funny because when I saw that the Yankees were actually doing that and doing the pictures and whatnot that yeah. stemmed back in April that I know of of a company that was doing that overseas for soccer or football yeah. football right football. but but yeah so it's like football. it's it's and, and, and again it and again you know it you you have to we're all now affected from this freaking day of the plague or COVID or whatever you want to freaking name it, right? And, yeah. it, you know, where I think people are just getting 
people are really getting aggravated and agitated and business owners or or workers or whatever your your role is and family functions and it's just it's just you know it it's just a we're all ping pong balls in this game of uh electoral chess you know and yeah and and you know it, let's be real the 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 idea of it is because you know um sports is a business right sports teams is a business and it's about engaging your fans so i think it's a super cool idea and whatnot yeah. but you know um here in the states they're behind but they're really behind because COVID and lockdowns and all that had a 12-week head start than us anyway because it happened yeah. on the other side of the pond. So, you know, but, yeah, so when, when I when I saw that, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to. Um, I, I, I honestly, between my little guy and my family and job and business, yeah. I just don't have the bandwidth to uh, to take a picture. But if you want me to, if you send me, if you make it easy for me, if you send me the link, I will submit my picture. I'm gonna I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna go ahead and just do it for you. Yay! Have, perfect. That's awesome. Because I I have photos of us both wearing our Yankee hats, but see, I even went a step beyond that. I went through all my favorite baseball teams. Yeah. And I submitted my photo with the different hats. <laughs> nah. So you'll <laughs> yeah, so you'll you'll see me in L.A. You'll see uh, L.A. Dodgers, yep. not the L.A. Angels. Yep. <laughs> L.A. Yep. Dodgers. Yep. You'll see me in San Diego. San Diego Padres, because that's where I'm. That's where I'm from, mm-hmm. uh, San Diego. And then you'll see me here at the Rangers Stadium. You'll see me at Yankee Stadium, and then you'll also see me at the uh, uh, Cubs Stadium. Nice. So, yeah. So yeah. Nice. There you go. If I had I choice know. and been with, um, I do have a LA story on how my Yankee faith was tested when Tory left. Oh, and I actually have an L.A. hat that that I still rock. You know what I mean? Like, it's not a fitted yeah. hat. You know what I mean? But uh, and 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 my my Yankee faith was was tested and I followed him for a couple of years and then and then dipped out. And then yeah. my my secret crush team secret crush team for years you know how you have like a you know like yeah. a secret crush you know you're in high school or whatever and you know it could never happen i love the miami marlins like you know <laughs> and, and and half of it is because i i just love going to miami you know what I mean? yeah you know well, my uh, yeah, but, one of, go ahead yeah was, no i'm sorry i was gonna say one of my good friends heath bell went to miami after he left the padres and he and I were good friends, and uh, so yeah, I have I have not seen him since he left mm. to the Marlins. <laughs> you know, and and never heard from him again. <laughs> and my Yankee faith was tested, uh, yet again, uh, like really tested. Like I, like I'm like, oh my god, like I'm borderline done. Like you know, and was when how they handled the Bernie Williams last year oh, yeah. Exodus, and I'm just like, eh, you know. Uh, yeah. As a Yankee fan, everything I said came true, just so we know. So pay attention. I was not an A-Rod fan. I wasn't a Giambi nope. fan. Uh, nope. I did go to the 2001 World Series right after 9-11 when I saw Kurt Schillen pitch uh, pre-Bloody Sock and all of that debacle uh, yep. there with, with Arizona. Uh, Bush threw out the first pitch. It was in 2001, a month that way, October, September. Yeah, it was a month after 9-11. That was crazy. That was weird. Um, definitely a weird time. Actually, been to Game Four and Five of the World Series. That was super cool uh, yeah. there. And um, you know, it, it, it's so avid fan. Been there, but you know, uh, us being in crowds are just it, it's it's. I wouldn't say it's a thing of the past, but it's a thing that's gonna ride out. We're gonna be talking about this for a solid year. Oh, like yeah. I think fast oh. forward, it'll be March of next year, and and maybe maybe there'll be a. A, a loosening up of mat, you know, fifty thousand people piling into a stadium yeah. and stuff like that, and you know, it it is what yeah. it is. It's yep. it's the time it's, we're in, you know. It, it's over. That's what I call it. I I even told my wife, I said, we're not going to the concerts. We're not doing stadiums. We're not doing anything crazy right now. I mean, not crazy, just the normal stuff that we knew prior until this thing is done. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it. I, I, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I mean, yeah. everybody else does, and 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 you know, it it, it is a factor. But I, my only take on this is twofold, right? I wonder if this wasn't an electoral year, would it be held different? And number two, 
regardless, it's still going to go on through an election. So it's going to, yeah. so, and people are like, oh, well, you know, it's not, well, no, that's March through November with a January implementation. Either way, whoever you vote for, don't care, right? Um, yeah. You know, well, don't care for the sakes of the show, right? Uh, right. And and it, it's going to be nine months. And it, mm. COVID started with restrictions and all that in March. That's a year. Yeah. Business owners are have to have a year uh, of, you know, and it's tough enough to, to, to run a business and, and do that there. And and yeah. I don't know. I just, I, 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 I get very frustrated when I see different, you know, different rules, different things, different states running amok, you know, oh, yeah. Florida, of course, the panhandle. Well, so much for the warm weather nuking this, the, this, the, you know, subsiding with this COVID thing, right? Yep. And the thing is, yep. I, I don't think people really don't know the severity because in general, people don't check on their own health. You know what I mean? Like right. in general. So, you know, yeah. and then you're passing it along and doing that. It's like, I don't know. Like, it just, it, it's just too many unknowns. And this is my take. Regardless of if it's handled, regardless is there, I'm just I'm just being safe. Now I'm not freaking in the nope. house twenty four seven, but I'm avoiding big crowds and, and doing that there right. and, and and chilling. But then again, yeah. I think I was prepped for COVID because I love tucking myself into a cigar shop and and not dealing with a ton of people. Yeah, uh, you know, despite my host roles here, I'm you know I I, I capture a room's attention ju- just me being in the room. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm I'm. Just the way I talk, whatever, and, and yeah. so you know, I don't like that that kind of lime, limelight. Uh, if yeah. if that makes sense, like I rather you know, kind of yeah, just do that. I, that's just me, you know. Yeah, yeah, I had that. I had that just this past uh, weekend when I went to a, a, a cigar lounge over here in Dallas, and I walked in, grabbed a stick, talk shop for the owner for a second, and then went in the back room. Yeah, and it, and it was just totally different. I was there by myself. For mm. two hours, yeah, yeah, like nobody walked in. I mean, one guy, uh, yeah, nobody walked in until I was getting ready to leave, and then a couple people started to walk in. But it was just nice to be there and not have you know the conversations or hear conversations, and then just relax and take a time out for myself, you know, and enjoy the stick I was smoking at the time. Yeah, so, I've been on yeah. that. I've been on that kick. You know, I mean, yeah. granted. I go into a cigar shop. People always want to talk shop with story geeks. People always want to ask me where's Paul. People always want to ask me what's going on with the show. How's the show yeah. doing? Blah blah. blah. And, and and or you know, did you try this stick? Did you try that stick? What do you think of this stick? What do you think of that stick? Right. Now, they they they, <laughs> they said I should do a story geeks outtake. That's off yeah. the sticks because I tell people like what I think about it, like when, when I'm in yeah. public, you know what I mean? And they're like, yeah. oh, wow, like freaking, you know, like that's like there's some sticks. I'm just like, dude, nah, like that's just, it's not for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't go around what freaking you- shitting all over the industry, you know? Right. <laughs> but again, I, I don't go around freaking kissing ass all over the industry either. Yeah. So with your red wine or with what what type of wine are you drinking? What do you what are you smoking there? What do you got in your hand? I can't tell you. It's part of Paul's fuck off section, but it's a Boulevard uh-huh. it's a Boulevard Cuban. <laughs> uh-huh. Paul has a fuck off section that like a, a fuck off <laughs> section. It literally says this right here, the humidor to my right. Right? Yeah. And and you know, I it's a Boulevard Cuban. Yeah. So I'm smoking a Boulevard Cuban with um it's a Saint Francis Old Vine Zinfandel from Sonoma Valley 2017 date. Oh, okay. Okay. I ain't messing around today, son. You know what I mean? That's it's right. funny. Like like it's funny cuz like if I have a beer, I don't know, like I don't know. I, I look at myself cuz I'm staring at you, right? And I'm like, yeah. "All right, you know, like I'm having a beer. I'm on Stoky Geeks." Like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have wine." I'm like, "Welcome to Stoky Geeks." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't know what it is like you know i'm just like you know welcome to stoke geeks today we're classing it up we're you know, classing it up uh, i gotta put my pinky out there we go Good. yeah you know yeah so. it's it's different it's different for me now because now you know i'm gonna be doing the interviews you know when we do our thing i'm gonna be doing it from here so i can't i'm in a fishbowl so i literally have glass uh you know now yeah. i'm in a fishbowl so you can see there's a window over here there's glass in front of me um, I can shut my door and nobody will bother me because they don't they don't bother me. Well, formatting <laughs> wise, formatting yeah. wise, Stogie Geeks, if we, 
you know, go on on a th- on a making the date up. I know it won't be on a Thursday, but if we go on on a Thursday or whatever, whatever, we need to sit down and, and figure that out. Because at the end of the day, it's a podcast. Like, how many people are, 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 are watching us live? Like, oh, my God. You know, they're synchronizing their watches. I think three. You know? <laughs> I want to say, I hope all of them are. But, yeah. No, nah, it's you, my two cats tell. and freaking, you know, I don't know. I'm going to make it up. I don't know. You know, yeah. I know I, it depends on your job, right? If you're in a computer, right. you like to listen. A lot of people say, I, I just, I put the YouTube. YouTube on, but I listen because I gotta still work and whatnot, yeah, exactly. and you know you, it is what it is. You know the story. Geeks, you know, the story geeks. Let me tell you something. W- yeah. We're holding in an audience, okay, in yeah. an industry that can't get out of its own way, <laughs> right? Yes. And and they don't want like like you know they can't get out of its own way. You know, like today's guest. Ah, you know, uh, I'll do it next week. Okay, let me reformat the freaking show and schedule for you next week, just for you to to come on Story Geeks. Nah, dude. Like you'll see you in October, bro. You know what I mean? I like, like freaking. Yeah. Uh, I just I just you know, and and that yeah. happens. And, uh, and it's one thing if you had a family emergency, but like yeah. w- we have had Story Geeks family emergencies via email. And then have them like blame it on like their kid gets in a freaking car accident and he never did. I'm like, dude, yeah. you're never coming on the show as long as I'm a host. You know what I mean? Like freaking, <laughs> you know, you, you could take it. And I literally took all the cigars, took the whole box, threw it in the garbage. And they're pretty <laughs> decent cigars. I'm like, oh, I'm done with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just me. Because, you know, in business and in life, this is what I think is half people's problems, right? It needs to be a two way street, right? It needs to be yeah. a two way street. We have a show format. There's obviously other podcasts. We're all in the space. Some are good, right. some are okay. Some are just on Facebook. Hey, that's their choice. You know what I mean? That's their business yeah. model. Paul put a platform together for a successful business model, and then he hired me as a host, and I ran with it. It's that simple. Yeah. It's business. You know what I mean? That's all it is. Right. You know, like let's not, you know, let's not overstep this this boundary. You know what I mean? And and it's just it, it is. It's just, that's just where we're at. You know, and so people, uh, people don't understand that. So what, what do you got? What, do, first have, of all, let's let the story wait, wait, geeks wait, wait, listen wait. to know. Do you have a gadget? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Before what? we go any further, Uh-oh. because I, I'm, I'm going to be a little girl. Right? Excuse, not a little girl. Excuse me. I did not say that. <laughs> These are troubling little, times, Drew. I, I'm going to be a little sense. Uh, well, is it not my Stogie Geek's birthday? Today? Are oh. we not? No, oh, it's the month, man. I mean, It's I, the it's month. It's month. the month of your birthday. Okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. Happy birthday to me. I've been here for a year You now. have been here officially a year. One year. Yes. And we have got to change that freaking Story Geek intro. <laughs> so, because if I were you, if, 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 <laughs> if you, if you were Joe Hosemper and I was Drew, not only yeah. would I be super cool and hanging out in Texas, I'd be like, bro, right. I ain't coming on the show to change the freaking interview. Like, uh, the intro. <laughs> that would drive me freaking bananas. Right, and, I and, need, I'm, uh, and I'm so we gotta we gotta we gotta figure that out. I did have a conversation with Johnny and all of that type stuff there too. With that yeah. is on the programming agenda. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you looked at the program agenda, people, people, it's like me mailing sticks to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> people keep asking me like, "Man, you've been there for a year now, and how do, how you know how do you feel?" And these are people at my lounge, mm-hmm. so I'm like. I go, what do you mean, how do I feel? I'm just, I do what I do there. It's what I do, you know, what I do here. Yeah. I just, you know, come in and enjoy the stick and write some notes and and look at you guys and then tell you guys what you guys are smoking is not, you know, mm-hmm. in play right now and yada, yada, yada. So anyways. Well, just, I actually had Stogie yeah. Geeks episode 335. I was hoping it was going to be in July, you know, because we know uh-huh. our track record, right? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I was hoping that in, in episode 335, which is the next episode, is going to be yeah. your your anniversary uh, gig. Oh, okay. It's going to be right. your anniversary. So we, I'll talk That's to you what... offline like I do in the beginning of the week and start doing some just... formats. And, and, and you yeah. know, we might do a year in review, ask you for your favorite interviews. I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, I've been well, happy smoking. anniversary, Drew. I am well, so fun. happy oh, that, you, that you have pinged me in... On Facebook, and we started out, and and it has developed into this, and yeah. it, it's 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 been a a, a a super cool year, but I will tell you that you know here the years fly fast. Oh yeah, well I'm ready. To, yeah, I'm ready to take it to the next level, whatever that may be. Yeah, you know once all this stuff calms down, then we can get back to business and let all these people just kind of do their thing in in, in the in the industry and. And, you know, kind of like shaking the cup, you know, with dice in it and see what falls out, you know, that yeah. kind of deal. 
Yeah. That's where we're at. That's where we're at right now in the industry. So I think but, I uh, think you know they're they're taking a they're, there's some cigar news. There's a virtual conference now. A big cigar conference is going to be uh, virtual. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, it, it, you know. Uh, in uh, into tobacco. You know. Um, yeah. This is going to be virtual. I, I I have mixed feelings about virtual conferences. Um, yeah. From a business perspective, I'm not ready to discuss that because I don't know all the details of that. Uh, yeah. and what that's going to entail, but I, th- what I like about what has happened is COVID has forced businesses to become innovative or uh-huh. die. But pre-COVID, it was always innov- innovate or die anyway. You know what I mean? Right. So you know eh, that's just that's just that's just me. Uh, we will do a segment on that and and fig- figure out that. I've been to virtual conferences, obviously, because what I do for a living. Um, yeah. And again, I have mixed feelings about that. That I'm not, I'm not just ready to, to go off on a show about it. Uh, I certainly can. I just, I, I it's, I want to keep the topics uh, in space uh, there, you know. But it, it's certainly uh, interesting. Uh, I do know with yeah. things slowing down, it's also a good time for uh, proper gu- groups to focus on r- the regulation argument that we've been having since 2014. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. the regulation argument and all that stuff there, and what comes out. But you know. I'm yeah. I'm still holding true, and I'm pretty excited that it's probably going to come to fruition. It ain't going to happen. They're going to kick the yeah. can down the road to the next administration. I mean, we even right. said that. I mean, I remember doing an episode on Stogie Geeks of who, if we were to send someone to the newly elected president, right? Look at us now, right? We've already been three yeah. years ago. If we were to send someone to the newly elected president to make the FDA argument, who would we send? And it was a super cool episode, right? Super cool episode. All the different hosts. I believe Coop was on there uh, at, uh-huh. at at that time. There had some great ideas. Uh, he said that you know Paul and I had some ideas that that people would even thought thought about. You know what I mean? I yeah. had my number one choice there. I had I believe it's going off the top of my head. I mean you know uh, I believe I had one. I know I had one one choice, and it's and if you were to ask me that today. Yeah, it'd still be the same choice, you know. Some people said Rocky yeah. Patel. Some people said, you know, Arturo Fluente. Some people said I, I had my and 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 this tells me one of two things, right? The first thing it tells me is, man, the industry really hasn't really changed that much in three years. Sure, right? That's bad enough, right? The second thing right. it tells me is that we're in another administration or the second term of a previous administration. And we're still like we're still treading water, and right. I, I, and and if you're treading water, you're not making money. Like this yeah. is what it is, right? If there's a if there's a cigar company out there, a premium tobacco company out there, and they're treading water, they're not growing market share, or they're not they're not you know do uh, yeah. they, they might be an innovative pro- product, but sure. did the previous product sell more than the other product? So. Therefore, you're not making money. You're making lateral movements or whatever. So there's so many yeah. ways that you could go with that conversation. But do you know who my number one choice would, would be and still is? Who was it? Jose Blanco. Jose Blanco. Actually, you know, I would, I was just talking to somebody about Jose Blanco yeah. four hours ago today. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it would be Jose Blanco. And, 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 and here's my reasoning. It's pretty simple, right? Mm-hmm. Before his cigar resume, he ran a successful business. Yeah. In the spirits industry. Oh, okay. So you know business. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And yeah. you're a great ambassador for the premium cigar industry. You know, some people said Rocky Patel. Rocky Patel, he's a freaking marketing agency. Right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let's be real. Like, uh, you know, let, let's be real. I know all oh, men hate mail is coming. Send it to Drew at StoryGeeks.com, right? You know, <laughs> but it just it is what it is. Like, you know, and, and, and again, that's just a business model. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Right. There's nothing wrong with volume. The, pff, I mean, <laughs> online does it. There's nothing more. There's nothing more wrong with 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 that for a business model. I'm not knocking the cigars. I don't misconstrue what I'm saying about him. I mean, he's had a success story. I mean, but before he came up with what his company is today, he wasn't successful in the industry. And then he became a success story. So much to the tune that Rocky Patel was discussed in mainstream media. 
on yeah. those successful stories, his entrepreneurial stories. So I'm not by any means dogging him, but they were saying because of the business acumen and all of that stuff. I don't know. I yeah. just every time I see Jose, I I, I he co- and he comes to the studio frequently, which you know sporadically whenever he's in town, right? Him and Paul, uh, they talk, yeah, you know, all the time and all that stuff. And and he comes to the thing, and and you know what I like about it because he knows how to treat people. Yeah, he knows how That's to treat a- people. And and oh. and and I think that that is important. I think he can probably maybe current administration could take a couple lessons from Jose Blanco, people. Yeah. But <laughs> but anyway, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's just you know I don't know. I just I just I, I, he has a poise about him that I that just have a good vibe about him. I think he would do a wonderful job representing the community in a litigation room or or uh, hearing about a committee, uh, especially ten minutes before an official vote. Right, right. No, I'd say, and that was my talk today about with this other individual about Jose. Uh, we were just talking about um, some of the people that that uh, have done very well and continue to do well mm-hmm. and have transitioned from their roles, you know, throughout the cigar industry and just kind of and and are moving into that uh, direction of being a uh, you know being a spokesman, you yeah. know. You know, and that's yeah, and that's what we were. That's what that conversation was, uh, yep. you know, about. But yeah, and then Rocky, same thing with Rocky. You know, I, I've seen him on CNBC, yeah. and some of the financial, you know. Whoa, uh, that was good. That works. Smoking a Cuban. <laughs> wow. Okay. So yeah, I got to the good part of the Cuban because I was about to say <laughs> the cigars and like not 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 doing it for me. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Go ahead. But yeah, but yeah, you know, uh, guys like you know Rocky, like you were saying, you know, they 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 they've been in the mainstream media, uh, you know, for you know the financial part of it, and so yeah, there's a lot there, um, and I think this is a great time. That's the conversation I had with somebody else in the cigar industry earlier today, was that it's a good time for these heads to pop up and become the new face and of of the industry. But more, not the new face, but just more the spokesperson, mm-hmm. um, and just kind of like you know maybe interact with PC. Well, you know, of course, PCA came into the conversation and mm-hmm. some other bodies uh, of the cigar industry, and and saying that maybe that should be the focus and going forward with mm-hmm. this industry. But you know, that's that's a long talk. I don't want to bore anybody. Let's get let's get forward. Having so never have- having never been to a show, I sure hit the nail on the head on that one. Right. So you asked me earlier. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'd ask you earlier. God, I'm sorry. Uh, you were saying you asked me earlier in the week about gadgets, and we were talking about it. And I wanted to bring in the cigar medic, so nice. I brought the cigar medic in. Um, it is, as you can see, it's got the probes. For those of you listening and watching, uh, you got to go back to uh, Stogie Geeks, the last episode, three thirty three. So you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash three three three, and you can um, get our commentary on the cigar medic but go ahead Joe, you continue it yeah so this 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 like this is what it looks like uh it's nothing you know very fancy uh it's got two probes mm. so you can probe yourself i mean your cigars yep <laughs> it's got the cap that's tethered nice so you can lock it in place it's and, got a serial number on it oh yeah yeah it's got a serial number on it mm. so yeah nice that's it that's it in itself uh, so that's what I was saying last week about it was saying that it had, uh, let me see if I can get that in there. Yep. I got it. We got it. Okay. Oh, hold on. Uh, but it just describes there in the lines, you know, what the, what the humidity, uh, percentages are and what, what you can expect, mm. um, that cigar to do, uh, in those percentages. So, yeah, that's a guide, um, in itself. Um, so just wanted to finish that up for our Stogie East listeners. I just still want to know if you poked your cigar and <laughs> and if it wasn't up to your optimal number that you were reaching for, would you put it back? Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't go into anybody's establishment and start probing cigars. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Uh, I would buy it first and then do it. But you know what? Like I said, this 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 deal here was just... Uh, somebody was talking about it with me, one of our Stogie Geeks listeners, and and for them, I would think that yeah, that's a good tool for them to have. It's it's 
it like i said it's for me it's novelty yeah. um because i i know where my cigars are at i take care you know we we take care of our cigars we kind of know mm-hmm. and if it's ready if it's ready to smoke it's ready to smoke and if it's not well you know it's not going to get a good favor uh judgment on us you know from us that that cigar has performed or done well because it just didn't you know what have you i know where my but, cigars are at they're shoved in a in a plastic ziploc bag oh shoved, yeah. shoved in my backpack <laughs> and ironically they don't break <laughs> right. you know what i mean I, I, and i just you know people are like you know i'm like nah dude i i i mean i have a humidor on my desk and travel i ain't walking around with that i, I just right. i just you know yeah you got a nice little leather you got a nice leather uh ensemble there for your cigars i've seen that it's yeah i nice. have it here i do use this because it has tools in it you know what i mean yeah. it has the lighter now it's covid times right so i don't use the public lighter the public lighter or the public yeah. cutter at a cigar shop you know what i mean so i got right. my punch and my bullet and my v i got my pen yeah. so i can sign checks because everybody's asking for money I got my business go. cards that I never take out, and Paul right. gave me this tool. Oh, it is gadget time. Look at this. I forgot about this. Paul See? Gave, I, knew you, Paul, I knew you had a gadget. You're digging it out, right? Holy crap. I, I, hold on. Let me wipe the, Let me get the dust off this. <laughs> right? <laughs> Paul gave me this tool, right? This this is this is actually um, an interesting tool, right? <laughs> what, but, um, Paul, it's, um, I don't know, he ordered some cigars, and- it has a wedge underneath it. Wait, here we go. It has a wedge on the... On, oh, I can't see it because the camera's in front of me. Duh. I'm all right. Right? Uh, the, <laughs> the, it has a wedge underneath it. So when you get the old school boxes that have the nail, yeah, yeah you can yeah. like... Ree, with the nail. Here's the cool part. Oh, okay. Right? Here's the cool part, right? If you um, want to bang it back, like instead of just yeah. using your thumb... It has a mallet. That's what I, I I was thinking. What is that? A tamper or it's a mallet? Kind of, it, I was going to bang yeah. my computer. That's not a good idea, right? Like, uh. it's a mallet, and it's pretty. It's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty cool, cool tool. You know, I yeah. I look at it like this. If there's ever a beef in a cigar shop, I'm doing one of these. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> but, but I don't know. I'm uh, I, I've never used it. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, I know Paul has his. Uh, it's right on the humidor there because when he gets oh, a box, cool. puts on his humidor and he does it. I've never seen him bang the the, <laughs> the hammer yeah. down, but um, yeah, man. Um, I have that in there. So getting back to that there, uh, cool. and then I have, I have uh, on the sticky note on the white piece of paper. It's who I have to call for, like, someone gave me, like, a business lead or whatever. And oh, that's okay. always there. And then I have uh, sticks, uh, bands yeah. of stuff I'm going to talk about, Stogie Geeks. Oh, sweet. Look at that. Right. And yeah. um, before we get to our sticks of the week, I have a question for you. I know yeah. I'm going to get flack by this. I know I'm going to get flack by this. Um, and I found this in my humidor. I I can't go closer than this because uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sitting down in the studio, but I found this in my humidor, and I found three of them. And I know I've talked about it before, but I cannot go through all of the Story Geeks episodes that we've archived. I, you know, <laughs> took me seven months to mail you freaking sticks. <laughs> you know what I mean? That'll exactly. take you like six years to go through that. Um, and on the band, and the reason why I'm making this attention is because I, I, I'm asking the Story Geeks listeners. I was going to post it on Facebook, but I just don't want flack for it, right? I thought it was warped. I'm not 100% sure, right? Um, but on the band, it says, I can't re- hold on the light. It just says, like, it has a skeleton and a star. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a Day of the Dead skeleton, right? And then it yeah. says, uh, leave a mark, start something. Call your mother, finish something, help a friend, make a statement, set a goal on the one band. And then on the other side, it says, impress yourself, raise your eyebrows, challenge the world, exceed expectations, just go, seize the day, and expect the unexpected. I am looking to find out who the heck this cigar belongs to. So, Story Geeks... I believe it was warped. I looked on their website. I'm going in my archive in my mind. 
that's dangerous. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to be uh, as an entrepreneur and, and Stogie Geek and Security Weekly in, right? Security Weekly employee, right? My mind, right. and a, a, a you know, father of a 22 month old son, my, my mind's wandered, <laughs> right? But <laughs> I, I, these are friggin' awesome. Nice. Like, I just, and so if you're listening and watching, and I know I'll hopefully jar someone's memory and they're going to know. And Paul was yeah. like, yeah, just put it on Facebook. And I was like, dude, I just don't want to deal with the flack. Uh, you really <laughs> don't know what that is? You talked about it on the... Uh, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. So I just figured I put it out here. Uh, yeah. If you know what it is, email Drew so so Drew can tell me and surprise me. That'd be cool. There we go. Drew at StogieGeeks.com. Right. And then Drew would be like, hey, someone emailed me. This is uh, what we're doing. So, Drew, without further ado... Yeah. Um, you know, that's just Chicago news. I mean, what? It's more regulation, uh, yeah. more regulation talks, and yeah. there's going to be a virtual conference. I think that's a super cool idea. A lot of innovative things that they could do. I'll probably do a do a a, a, a synopsis uh, on that coming soon uh, to yeah. a future near you. I do know that Story Geeks promos. Uh, we're going to be talking about the La Unica 400 Natural and okay. the Quorum Maduro Toro. By oh, J- yeah. J.C. Newman. I have interesting thoughts about those cigars, even though they're part of they're not part of their upper tier as far as selection. But yeah, you know, um, definitely something that you want to catch those re- re- reviews on. And then coming up in the month of August, we're going to be reviewing the Diamond Crown Maximus <coughs> Number Four. Uh, okay. They're coming up there, so you know, got some super cool uh, th- yeah. things going on here on the show. It's always an exciting. Uh, it's always an exciting time, but true. You've posted some interesting sticks that I'm now just taking a look at. So, yeah. um, yeah. Why don't you go first? All right. I'm going to bust in with Monty by Monte Cristo mm. and AJ Fernandez. That was, a uh, 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 how do you say that? Jeez, that word's already blown my mind. Collaboration. Collaboration. There you go. Uh, yeah. So the collaboration between these two, they've developed a Robusto for, 4.2 by 54. Uh, this beautiful cigar is wrapped in a Ecuador Habano 2000. Binder is Nicaraguan Carrillo. I'm gonna, I'm saying that wrong. I always say it wrong. Criollo. Uh, Criollo 98. No. I always say it right when I think of Joe Criollo, but I never think of it right when I say it off the print on my screen here. I don't know why. It's okay. It took me years, <laughs> and I'm probably still pronouncing it wrong. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, binder Nicaraguan, uh, actually binder Nicaraguan Criollo uh, ninety-eight filler Nicaraguan Dominican uh, blend. And then uh, this cigar here is is gonna for me it was more on the full strength end. Uh, I don't you know it says it's a medium to full strength off their web, but for me it was more on the full. <laughs> so uh, this I've got my hand on a, a half box of these. Uh, so I, w- I walked into a store, uh, one of the brick and mortars, and uh, about a month ago, and they had like a box, a half a box left. So I bought it, um, just off, just because the price was great, and being that it's an AJ Fernandez, which I'm a big fan of, I said, well, you can't, I can't go wrong. So here we go. Uh, taste notes on this was uh, very woody at at, at first. Um, you got you get a lot of woodiness out of it, and then it transitioned over to some chocolate. Uh, pretty quickly, um, and then from there you kind of get the coffee notes going, and and the first third of the cigar was just a lot of just uh, a, a lot of consistency in those flavors, and there was nothing there that was really wavering or dying down. It just kept going, um, and then it, and then it just started to graduate into some toasted some toasted nuttiness. Um, I was uh, getting a little bit, just a little bit of the uh, the the dry fruit uh, on that uh, first third, and then on the second third, I really started to uh, hone in on that dry fruit, uh, more on the raisin side of it, um, and then uh, from there, just started to transition in spices and what have you. Uh, nutmeg was one of the spices that, for me, that it just really came through on the palate and transition up into the uh, receptors in my brain. Uh, uh, and then also a spice of cinnamon. Uh, but yeah, this cigar was uh, just a very enjoyable, sm- uh, smooth, uh, not too crazily, uh, you know, transitioning uh, complexity. Uh, so yeah, I gave this thing a box worthy because the next time I go there, I'm going to buy me a box of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
uh, on the rating. The SM MSRP on this is about nine bucks, right. uh, just depending on where you're at. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, again uh, just you know anything with AJ on it, I I just don't think I can go wrong uh, on it. And then to be paired up with Monte Cristo, you know, they make some great cigars in their wheelhouse as well. And you 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 just come out with a win-win situation. So right, right. Um, I know shops that have them locally and. They do very well with that stick. Yeah. They do very well uh, with that stick. I think with Monte Cristo and their track record and, and AJ and their track record, it, it it's sometimes when a collaboration comes, sometimes, and I've said this often before, that, you know, one company's profile would dominate the stick. I think yeah. the sweetness comes from the collaboration. Cause I really don't. Yeah. Cause when I when I, when I when I smoke AJ stuff, I don't really get like a lot of sweetness. No. Sweetness from it, right? I get earth. Right. I get I get um you know a, a drier you get a lot of wood, drier, wood grittier hay. wood type of profile. When yeah. I smoke Monte Cristos historically, even if you were to graduate to Monte Cristo Cuban, yeah. uh, there, regardless of of Cuban or not, I um. I, I get on my palate a lot of creaminess of texture of the smoke yeah, there, yeah. but and and I wouldn't classify. I get some cocoa uh, on the Monte Cristo profile, right? Uh -huh. um, certainly, if it's cut right for me, and it yeah. burns, it burns good. I get a leather, a, uh, not a supery leathery component, but I start to get one. That's yeah. like if I were to describe Monte Cristo's profile and AJ Fernandez as I just did, that that's what I get. I think the yeah. sweetness comes from the collaboration part. Just my opinion. Um, yeah. I think it's super cool because you have a different profile than historically yeah. what both of them might be known for. Yeah, you get that. You get that for sure because I, I agree with you on that because uh, I know when he does stuff with New World mm -hmm. um, and, and, and they are knowing their profile – and then when he gets in there, you can really, really hone in on the leather components and the woods yep. and the, you know, you get the cedars aspect and then you start to get, and then they just marry their uh, new world, you know, uh, or even Monte Cristo. I mean, they just marry their blend with that. And it's, I mean, it's, it's just, in, for me, it's incredible. Cause like in my mind, it's like, uh, I had an aunt who used to um, go and, and actually make her perfumes like she would go to this boutique place and she would pick out the oils and whatever, the water, the alcohol, whatever. Sure. And, take, and it was just like, you know, uh, but yeah, I, that, I imagine that's what happens when these guys get together. They go through these tobacco bales and they just start, you know, going through them and, and figuring out a great um, marriage between their style and, and AJ style. Mm -hmm. Plus, what I think that's super cool about that collaboration mm. is that you have and not that any one company would not have anything to bring to the table yeah. uh, but you have monte cristo who's well known and is supported and structurally by themselves you have oh, yeah. aj fernandez who is well known and supportively structured by themselves and then they collaborate it, it, it it's like all things are on the line right yeah unlike other collaborations where you have a known name and you might not have a a, a such a known name right you know what i mean and i'm not saying like even the such a known name could carry the other name because it's getting into market share right but that's yeah. a whole nother discussion right you know yeah uh, you know but like especially like if it, if they were historically known for honduran dominican tobaccos and then all of a sudden they're doing a collaboration that has nicaraguan tobaccos like is the known name being taught how to use nicaraguan which is what i dub as like the new process the new cigar the new yeah. um premium cigar consumer flocks yeah. to Nicaraguan. I mean, Nicaragua's getting more and more market share, so that's not a uh, a theory. That's a fact, right? Yeah. They're getting more and more market share. So it's like, are they learning from that process of the Nicaraguan and then going? Or on the opposite side, is the other one hanging on to the big name and doing that there? But when you have two powerhouses like A.J. Fernandez and Monte Cristo, and they produce oh. a stick there, like I said, the, the, my first impression is, oh, yeah, that, that stick does very well in the shops that I know of. Oh, yeah. So very what's the stuff. rating? Uh, rating on that was box worthy. I'm, I'm going to buy me a, I'm gonna buy me a box uh, for go. sure. That, uh, I'm already done with, this, with the uh, half box I had. 
Um, and then, yeah, it, they're, I'm, I'm going to go get me some more. So uh, very high. I highly recommend it. Uh, if you're uh, this cigar right here is probably going to be a midday to afternoon uh, evening cigar. It's not going to be a morning cigar just because of all the the woodiness that's there. And then that with the with the sweetness, it just doesn't um, I try to smoke one out in the morning um, and it just didn't um, sit well because, of course, I hadn't eaten and I was. Yeah, I think I had a coffee with it and that was it. But in the afternoons, this is a very enjoyable cigar. Uh, nicotine wise, I mean, it's there, so you're going to yep. notice that vitamin N there for sure. But otherwise, I mean, it, it leaves you functionable <laughs> after you smoke that stick, and you are going to take it down to the nub for sure. Yeah. 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 Cool. Awesome. Right. I had uh, Blind Man's uh, by Caldwell, Blind Man's Bluff Maduro. Oh, okay. Had it in two different sizes, just because I'm not keen on the other size, the six by sixty. But uh -huh. um, I had uh, it in the six by fifty and the five by fifty. Five by fifty is absolutely positively where it's at for me. But we're not shocked. I like smaller sticks. All right uh, there. Uh, your wrapper is uh, Pennsylvania uh, Maduro, uh, uh -huh. obviously from USA, Pennsylvania. Uh, binder is Sumatra and filler is from the, the Dominican Republic. It's a five by fifty. Obviously, it's robusto size. It's MSRP is around, you know, high sevens, eight dollars. There, so plus your tax, so it's a nine dollar stick. Uh, came out in April of 2019. It's in regular production. Um, I really like this stick. Uh, I'm, I'm. When when Caldwell, well, well, let me get to the stick, and then I'll get to Caldwell, right? So when yeah. you, to me, like this stick there. Now they have a regular blind man's bluff. Then this is a blind man's bluff Maduro. Just for those of you who are listening instead of watching, right? Um, you know, so it's a Maduro. So with that, with the Maduro, unlike the the uh, the original stick, it has like a mix of wood and some pepper accents for me and whatnot. But it's a great introduction to me to a medium stick. So if you get someone who says, ah, I don't really do Madero, they're too strong and whatnot, it's not. It's a, it, it, it's really a true medium uh, there. Uh, burns even, great stick, construction's fine, all of that stuff. Uh, it goes great with coffee. Uh, I've I've had it with, with, like, straight beer, stuff like that. Usually it's a great golf course stick. You know mm. what I mean? It's a great golf course yeah. stick. It's constructed well. It's It stays together. Um you know, I've had a Maduro this week that I'm not going to talk about, but I will at least on today. But it was like a thin <laughs> wrapper, and I'm like, oh my, like it was delicate. And I expect, and the way it looked, it looked beefy. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think, I think some of the story geeks can appreciate some of that visual there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, again, if you bullet cut it, it gets super great towards the end. Uh, there, I, I'd actually, I, I mean, I. If it depends on where, where you are, right? You know, I have a friend who's absolutely positively into Caldwell, like like digs them, digs the artwork that they do in the non-premium cigar industry and, and, and stuff like that, and they're super into Caldwell. So, yeah. I, I, you know, if you have a friend uh, who's trying to get into Maduro's, stuff like that, I do a box split with a friend on this one. Nice. You know, definitely. You know, I, I, I wouldn't get a box for me because it's kind of like, you know, there's this so many other stuff. But I could see where someone who would be getting into a medium stick would want to get into this. Um, really loves that kind of uh, woody pepper profile. Uh, if you retrohale, that's where it's at. Like that, that, yeah. that stick, it's one of those sticks. If you don't retrohale, you're really missing out. Right, yeah. Uh, you won't you won't get the full uh, uh, flavor there, but it's definitely a super cool stick. I do box uh, um, uh, a box split with a friend. Um, the ratings on this is I don't know a couple ratings that have come up uh, from from other sources. I'm like, oh wow, I would have gone a little bit higher on that, but you know, yeah. it, it's you know, this is what it is. I think uh, Caldwell as a company is 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 a super cool story. And they make some some um, super cool stuff. I, I I like the the King is Dead yeah. out of their uh, thing and Long Live the King from their series. But the Blinds Man Bluff uh, is something you should check out there uh, as well. Okay, box split with a friend. Box split with a friend. There you go. Yeah. 
So my next cigar I'm going to get into is called the Fratello Navata Inversio. Oh, where'd you get that? <laughs> I got <laughs> I got it in one of those cigar packs, and then I found uh, a lounge I went to this past week and had some there. So I grabbed a few more uh, just for this uh, review. Uh, so this is a Robusto 5.5 by 54. Rapple, rap, rapple, <laughs> rapper. I'm not even drinking or smoking because I can't because I'm in my, you know, your new fishbowl. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, rapper uh, is a Habano Nicaragua, uh, Nicaraguan, uh, binder in Ecuador, and then filler Nicaraguan. Uh, this was a touted as a medium to full strength. I, I didn't really, I, it, it was in a low uh, to middle medium for me. It wasn't to me, it wasn't even, um, it didn't have any strength to it at all. Uh, the nicotine content in this was probably mild at, be at best. Uh, taste notes on this cigar, uh, more on the bittersweet side of things that to begin with. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know, you know, I was more on the chocolate, the you know, the bittersweet chocolate of it. Uh, you get a dark uh, uh, spice tobacco, and I'm going to put that more on the pipe tobacco category hmm. um uh and then you get some espresso and then sweeten it uh a lot of sweet uh uh aromas really come through and then you get this creamy finish so i went on their website and just did some work after i smoked these cigars i just wanted to see what they were uh what what the cigar what they had on the content of it but they didn't really have much on it um they, they they touted this cigar as a mixture of their other uh, Nevada uh, cigar that they had, and then they brought in this other tobacco, um, which is what um, is giving it this sweet, creamy. Um, uh, it's just really kind of over, you know. For me, it was just a lot. There was just too much there for me. Um, so this cigar you know after after my third one i was glad to be done with it um just because it just like i said it's just not really um when i think of tobacco pipe you, you think of infusions i guess i mean that's just what comes to my mind um there's a lot of floral hints in there mm -hmm. and they're just really and then like i said the sweet undertones it just really i mean it's not a bad cigar it, it, it it's a good cigar i mean the good cigar burned well it performed uh there was like no tunneling there was i didn't have to relight it uh all but once and then i mean it as i smoked this probably in about 52 minutes is what it took for me to get through it so it was fast burning uh ash was pretty good on that and uh so i gave it a i gave the stoke geek rating on this one a fiver you know mm -hmm. just try try it maybe it's something you like i mean they're pretty expensive too they're 11 to 12 bucks right a right. piece, uh, just depending on where you're at. A box of these will run you at two hundred uh, two two and a quarter. quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's uh, so you really have to like that that genre of cigars, I guess. Uh, you know, and I, and I'm not saying it's infused. It just, it just, you know, that it, it really just had that really lot of uh, <laughs> flavor of right, right, of, of floral and sweetness. And it's chocolate. ranked medium to full. Yeah, talk to me about that strength. Did did, did that like, I don't know. I it, the first word that comes to mind is just me. It's kind of flat. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like it's just, it's just kind of flat. It doesn't dance out on me. It doesn't stick out. It's kind of flat. No. I see where you're coming with the pipe tobacco aromas yeah. coming yeah. from it, right? Um, yeah. There, but was it kind of flat for you? Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was like they touted as a medium to full uh, full strength, and I didn't even touch medium. Medium, I would say right. medium. Yeah. yeah, it just barely, just, just just barely, and that was only when I first fired that stick up. Other than that, throughout that cigar, um, it just, like I said, it trucked along just fine. It burned smooth, but it just wasn't something that I really, you know, think of as a medium full strength cigar. Right. And those of you who know me, that's 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 my genre is the medium full strength, right. more on the floor. But yeah, uh, yeah, uh, I, like I said, fiber. For me and uh like i said 11 to 12 bucks a piece i i would expect that thing to really kick you know kick you in the teeth um you know if if it was a true uh medium to full strength more on the full strength side but mm. it, it, did, it didn't arrive so yeah. yeah and when you mentioned pipe tobacco i i have a a, a pipe tobacco client that i i work with in the business mm -hmm. uh wilkiepipetobacco.com 
and yeah. uh, I do all of this online stuff and whatnot. And I've actually is like you know I, I I've I've been into pipes since I owned the shop, right? Yeah. So you know, and I'll tell you, man, did you ever go to a pipe event? I have never been to a one yet. It's some interesting cats, man. Like it's 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 like. It's like, you know, like these people, like you want to talk about like here on Story Geeks or other shows where we talk about like the slowness of enjoying your cigar and, yeah. and, and do, dude, it's like freaking slower than slow. And like, I've learned so much about like the Latakia and and yeah. how to add it and all of that stuff. Plus like, you know, when we, when I do the web development for it, I can't, when I post about the blend, I mean, obviously I have to read when I'm freaking producing right for, yeah. for the web description you know or else it would be spelled right so i'm like man i mean these freaking people make it sound so great so like i actually been to a pipe smoking event right yeah and it, it kind of reminds me of my golf game right i should golf like yoda and be patient yeah. but i golf like anakin right <laughs> and when i golf with the owner of churchill's who also golfs like anakin i do yeah. well and when i golf with people who golf like yoda who is how you should play golf? I, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes you know. So it's like it's like weird, right? But here's the point, right? When you go to a pipe smoking event and and we uh, Wilkie's going to debut five blends, right? Yeah. And we're talking. This is like a like how old this company is. Like they made brands for Abercrombie and Finch. Yeah. Like so, the Abercrombie and Finch, where now it's like skinny freaking college people, but like before it was a department store, <coughs> right? Where you could go and smoke in the middle of the department store, like the glory days, right? And I'm not even talking yeah. like the 80s, now I'm talking about 50s glory days, where, yeah, you 50s, know, yeah. if you went to the department store with your family and the kids were in the toy section and mom was doing all the, probably all the work and there were all of that stuff, you could sit yeah. in the middle of freaking Abercrombie and Finch and smoke your pipe. Like, dude, yeah. I was like, dude, I should have been born in that era. <laughs> like, I would like to totally yeah. do all the shopping, but it's funny because they're like, you know they're doing their pipes and like man it's neat you know and i was like yeah. yeah and it was funny because i'm like yeah i should add more latakia and I'm like you're right you're right how did you know that then i fucking say because i developed a website you buy it off a of pal you know what i mean <laughs> but you know i don't give away my secrets right like how long yeah. you been? Oh, a couple times uh, i don't mention stogie geeks like i can go and hide like you know what i mean oh i'm yeah. kind of new to this thing you know i don't tell my own to or anything like yeah. that and the owner's just sitting there, <laughs> there. i'm like yeah he's like dude that's your answer for everything i was yeah you know but then again <laughs> if you can't have fun with your customers you're, you're like doing it wrong you know what i mean right. but yeah i'm like yeah i'm like yeah if it just had more Latakia. So I don't know when you thought of that, that popped in my head. There you go. Yeah, you know, I always think of <laughs> I've always th I always think of uh, pipe smoking as a bespoke time in your life where you just become really uh, because I've been reading some articles about pipes and learning the different uh, woods and yep, yep. you know and and learning uh, watching videos on tampering your your tobacco in the yep. pipe. And things of that nature, and I just when you look at these things, I'm like, wow, that's a, it's kind of a bespoke time of your life, uh, you know. I mean, you don't have to dress, you know, like that, but it's just time. It's it's you know, it's it's relaxing. It, it looks is. like something you would really enjoy, dude. Uh, yeah, so I, I enjoy I, every. I love to freaking in the fall for me because we have seasons here, right? In, yeah. in New England, in the fall. <laughs> I got short yeah. sandals and a sweatshirt on, yeah. and I'm comfortable, and you're sitting outside on your deck, and you're tampering the freaking pipe, and yeah. you're taking your time, and you're just like, dude, and it's like, I mean, you think cigar smoking is enjoyable. It's another yeah. level, dude. It's a, well, it's, it's another level. Like, it's, well, it's a, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, because uh, cause just to watch that and, and read it. It's like wow, this is a pretty, uh, a very uh, good um, session, you know, yeah, yeah. for one. So yeah, yeah. What else you got in the pipeline? Oh, uh, <laughs> I have a freaking lesson. If you like the Candela wrapper, I'm talking about the Illusione uh, Holy Candela. It is freaking awesome. It is. It is just you know, it, it wrapper binder filler is all Nicaraguan. It is a Lancero. It uh -huh. is seven and a half by forty ring gauge. You're in that ten dollar price point. Illusione, like if you really wanted to to 
experience what because uh, sometimes like candela right i know alec bradley the like, candela is not popular for those of you who are listening uh and watching and you're new to cigars candela is the green wrapper like real green wrapper right uh yeah. almost looks like a frog okay now we all have a visual and a lot of people don't like them because that they're, they're you know the weird looking or the salty and what i am such a fan of the candela i love the rocky patel's candela i like the alec bradley when they did the filthy hooligan when it was all candela now they do a baba pole yeah. basically the black market with a baba pole right of of, of candela wrapper i mean it, it has its positives there um there's a the espinosa wasabi right freaking yeah. banging right but this yeah, if you wasabi. want like Candela 101 and want to really experience like a true tasting Candela old school. I, it doesn't, uh, this is what the Illusione, um, the the Holy Candela or the uh, Rocky Patel Candela. I think goes mm -hmm. bullet cut them. Now let's in Lancero, so you're gonna be careful with the bullet cut, but you bullet cut it and you smoke it slow. I mean, it's just super awesome. You get You get sweet and salt all in one. Not like like caramel sweet, but you get sweetness almost if like something like I don't know. I, I was told I was crazy for doing this, and people say like, "What are you doing?" When we go to barbecues, do you ever put salt on your watermelon? No, I never did try that, dude. <laughs> you at Stogie Geeks and Drew, you have got to try putting salt. Just sprinkle. I'm not talking. You know, just freaking take. You know, when you get a watermelon, you're at a cookout. Go to the watermelon. Just take yeah. the freaking thing. Go. Chicka, chicka, that's it. Just just a couple of chicka chickens. That's all you need. Freaking do uh -huh. it, 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 it. It's another level. It's another okay. level. It's like an upgrade. And that that is how I describe Candela. Nice. So you get the sweetness because watermelon is not wicked sweet, right? But you right. get like a subtle sweet. It's not caramel sweet, but you get like a subtle sweet with some saltiness. And then mm. like the leathery component kicks in with yeah. the saltiness trumping it. Because it's made by going. Illusione, and it's Nicaraguan tobacco, so it's going to be spicy by nature anyway, comparative to other regions, right? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome stick. Awesome stick. All right. You know? I'm I wonder I wonder what it would be like if they made it in a Robusto. You know what yeah. I mean? But because it's a Lancero, you get the wrapper, which is, you know, where most of the flavor comes from anyway. Um, it, it, it's Lancero 101. I'm sorry. It's Candela 101. Like, if yeah, you want to yeah. learn and explore green cigars, Candela wrappers, that's where you should start. Yeah. And you'll probably be scarred because what's on the market, you know, like I said, Rocky Patel do, does a great job with his yeah. as well. It's that Edge size. You know how he has that Edge series? Yeah. The Edge Candela is super cool. Nice. They're not in a cool. lot of shops. They don't do well because they're Lanceros. They don't do well because they're, Lan because they're Candelas. But that's owe yourself a treat. Um, mm, ed, okay. The educational component skews my rating because I do a box split on these. Yeah. But just because of the educational component. But if you're super into Candela, I could see it going over into into a box for sure. Box. So I'm on the edge. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the gauntlet. It's it, it's a box worthy. It's a box worthy and save it. Enjoy it. You won't plow through all of it because if you smoke a Candela, have you? You've had Candela, right? I've had, yeah, I've had. I've any had the any ones that again. stick out in 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 your head that you're like, wow, I like it, or does that taste not satisfy you? You know the the filthy hooligan is the one I've had. The Baba pole or the straight? Yeah, the bar pole. Yeah, 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 the bar pole. Yeah. No, no, no. I've had the straight. The no, straight's the where it's pole. at when when Alec Bradley made it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why they yeah, took it off the market. Maybe it's hard to make. Maybe it didn't do well. It probably yeah. didn't do well. But Alec Bradley positions it right, right? They yeah. they announce it. Well, they come out with that version around St. Paddy's Day every year. It's green. Yep. Everything's green. It doesn't matter which region you live in. People get it. I bet you they did the Baba Pole not so much because of what it is. Because it's a pain in the ass to make a Baba, a baba Pole. But... And then that's but I think they did it probably because it might edge the sale a little bit more. Just yeah. by opinion. I, I think Pete Johnson has one too, right? Tatawahe? Don't oh. they have one? Mm. Now you put me on the spot. Mm. I forgot. I can't. It's now been a while. Put, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with they have one. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm, I'm not. It's probably one of their Monster Line series ones. I can't. 
It's yeah. been a while. Mm-hmm. I have to I have to go in my humidor and check those out again. I got it somewhere. I, I do have those uh, Tatawahe uh, uh, monster do you, series. Do you, do you like Cantelas? Or is uh, it not? It's not your. No, I just I, no, I, I I I don't have anything negative to say about them. I mean, it's uh, it's totally uh, different. I haven't had it. I haven't had enough. I, I will say that. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I probably had maybe I'm gonna say just probably in the last year I've had two. Yep. So Until Fluente it. had one. Yeah. Super good. You know what I mean? But, but it's not it's not Illusione. Good. <laughs> yeah. So I'll definitely get <laughs> Sorry. my hands on some, <laughs> Yeah, I'll definitely get my hands on some of those Illusiones for sure. because mm. uh, I know they're here in Texas uh, or here in my area. Yep. Uh, I've I've seen them, so I'll definitely grab some of those. Next um, door. As a matter Next door yeah. shovels to them. Because I talk about them. Wow. Like I did, they, they just say, you know, when I say shovels to them, we're talking a box every other week. I don't know if that's good. Right. Right. What's the box production on this? I don't even know if I did that <laughs> research. I don't know. Uh, boxes of 25. So I don't know okay. if that's good for a stick. I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not on the retail store. I can tell you from my time, but if I ever give you any store data, we're talking when uh-huh. we had 56K modem and, you know, there were yeah. 14. There were 14 shops in Rhode Island and not freaking 38. Soon to be 39. <laughs> well, there you go. You got time for one more? Or you got yeah, to... yeah, we have time for one more, right, Johnny? One, one, one more each? Yeah. Or Gustavo? Gonna... We have Gustavo now, so I, I don't know who's going to bark in my ear. But yeah. either way, yeah, we have, time for, we, we have time for one more each, for sure. All right. Do you All have right. time gonna... for one more each? I do have one uh, time for one more. And do you have a new gadget you want to talk about? I don't. I don't because I did. I couldn't find it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's well, we somewhere... talked about my gadget, the, the freaking the little hammer yeah. mallet thing that you know yeah. I carry around with me and it never used. Yeah. That's okay. Ga- I carry a lot of things in my backpack that I never use. I have a rock from Mount Washington. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, because a buddy of mine climbed Mount Washington on Fourth of July, That's... and I've been on the top of Mount Washington and did the presidential traverse. That's a great story. Right, that was in my radio days when I talked about it. Right, and um, it was only 2016, so it's not like I did it 20 years ago. I did it like four nice. years ago. Yeah, 2016. Where are we? 2020. Yeah. So, but yeah. So he actually surprised me and gave me the rock from top of my watch. I was like, dude, this the right because now I have uh, two rocks. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Johnny Bach to my ear. We're good. So it's cool. Awesome. Right. Yeah. We got one. Right. One more each. Let's do it. All righty. Uh, HVC. So I've been hearing a lot about HVC lately, and I'm going to say in the last, especially in the last month, um, I, everybody that's reviewing cigars has brought out HVC. I mean, you know, and I, and I do watch a lot of the uh, cigar reviewer shows because I, I subscribe to them. You know, I support our the people out there. And so, um, so HVC for me was like one of those companies that, I, I know about them. I just haven't really got into their profile uh, or the portfolio of their cigars. But now I started to get some in. So now here we go. So I smoked this uh, the Cerro Toro, uh, HVC, Cerro, Cerro Toro, C E R R O. It's a six by fifty four uh, wrapper. It's a uh, Corojo ninety nine. The binder is Nicaraguan and the filler is Nicaraguan. Uh, medium to full strength cigar, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this right here is like at the spectrum of medium and full. So right, it's right there. Uh, you're gonna love this cigar. So uh, if you if you haven't had one, go ahead and find it, grab it. They're not that they're 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 out there. Uh, taste notes on this one was. Uh, Pre uh, on on the light, you get you're gonna get cedar right off the bat. Uh, you're gonna get some of that some of that uh, uh, peppery uh, spice as well as you as you as you go through retro hells. I uh, retro held this stick four times during the, the time my smoking regimen with the stick, uh, and then it, and then you get a little bit of a sour. Now I've I've heard of people tasting sour in some cigars. I I. This cigar really gave it to me. It punched me. In, it punched me in my in, in my palate, and I'm like, man, this is really sour. But more on the on the on the, on the floral side. So uh, and 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 so the best thing I could really compare that with was with a, like a lemon rind, you know, mm. like the in, like the inside though, not not 
you know, not the outer skin part of it, the yellow part, the white part of it on the inside. So that's where I got that. And then and then from there, it just it transitioned nicely into some of the sweetness of the floral. But the floral again, that was more on more on the eucalyptus side, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And then and then from there, uh, you know, you get a little bit of hint of uh, cocoa, and then you you got that cedar that kind of it's very you know it bounces back and forth, transitions in in and out throughout the stick without 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 hesitation. So, um, so not not bad. I'm looking forward to smoking some of the other HVC offerings they have in their portfolio. Mm. I've got I've got I've got them now. Is so, that hitting your? Re- has that been in your? I'm talking business wise now. Before we get to this, uh-huh. is that hitting your region now, or has that been in your region and you're just getting to it? Um, I I'm a, I'm thinking it's just get it's just getting to the region. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go venture out and say that because do you um, have it in your home shop? I do not have it in my home shop. Okay, so the, yep. yeah, that, but I found it in some of the other shops here in Dallas, and it's uh so it's gained popularity and 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 again just like anything else. Like when I talked to Nomi at Prestige Cigars uh, and Tobacco there in Bedford, uh, I, you know, it's recommendation. So when I tell him, hey, man, this, start bringing in a cigar in, uh, within, within a month or so, we should see that cigar in our humidor. But, yeah, this is definitely – I'm going to smoke through some of the other stuff that they have to offer and then, and then, and then make my – recommendations to know me but uh like i said uh this one right here i would i would do uh i, I put it as a box split um because I, again at the time when i was started to go through the stick i didn't really know too much about it until after uh so it's a box split i would box split with anybody uh they're about eight to nine bucks uh msrp yep. uh and whatnot uh so yeah uh but i've uh recently i've heard the hvc 500 uh, people are now starting to get those out, and they're just really hitting the scene. I spoke right about now. the Black Friday. The Black Friday, yeah. Yep. Okay. I have advice and, for you retailers oh, after you're done, so remind me. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, this stick right here, I, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it, like I said, the, the sourness was interesting. That was just like it didn't really hit it. It took a few uh, draws to really to really get hone in on that and really – decide for me in my mind what it was that was creating that sour note there not bad not in a bad way yep yep yeah there hvc hit the scene here in in the northeast pretty heavy late 2018 mm-hmm. right and they they do well uh hvc is havana city cigar um yep. reference for you retailers Yes, the, thank you, Johnny's barking in my ear, right? He's like already yeah. like getting excited, like you retailers, get, if you're going to consider bringing it in, jump on that now, because around Thanksgiving, they release a yearly release called the Black Friday, and it is freaking awesome. They're in boxes of 50, the limited runs, shops do very well with them. I don't know if it's because of the limitedness. Uh, it's it's smaller in size. I described it a couple episodes back, so you won't have to dig too too deep in the archives um, there uh, to get it. But um, you know that stick is so good and so tasty. I've bought two boxes of them. Took one here to the studio, kept one in mm-hmm. my locker over at uh, Churchill Smokehouse Shop and Lounge, and I pa- I pass them out. Cause I I just like dude like not pass them out like I want to like I'm like dude a lot tr- people like to trade sometimes or whatever and I'm like have you ever tried these because that some of the consumers are getting into uh that brand uh there yeah. but they they've hit pretty hot and heavy uh and I'm assuming that you can't roll up on Thanksgiving and say yo man can I get a box of it a three four box because they're, they're limited productions and they're and they're there for their consumers but you know it's not it's a good buy in for for a retailer. You can rotate stock. You can move stock. You can put together yeah. HVC samplers. Their cigars are uh, they're not all over the map like other like other. Their profiles yeah. their profiles seem to be to me to be um, very very um, cedar, pepper, and Nicaraguan. Right, like bang, like you know, it's spicy. Right, there you go. Yeah, right. Spicy. Yeah. And, and and 
And then they come up with other blends that I'm, I don't, I'd have to see this cigar. I'd have to pull it up in Google. I didn't do it before. Uh, I'll pull it up after, see if I had this. It doesn't ring a bell. Um, but I'm interested, like you, you mentioned the yeah. lemon zest or sour citrus yeah. and, and floral that you're getting. And, and, and I'm, I'm yeah. intrigued on this cigar. So I'm going to, I'm going to seek this one out, um, there for sure. Yeah. The one, the one I think you're talking about is a Bon Caliente. Um, I just, I just went on their website. The right Black now, Friday? Know. Uh, no, no, no. It's all that. Okay. I, I. Yeah, there's a Bon Caliente one that I believe. And there's an anniversary one I've had, and yeah. it's good. It's good. I mean, I, I'd, I'd give it a fiver um, there. I think the but, but Black Friday, like, pff, I, if there was, like, okay. buy double boxes, go for it. Their inbox is a 50. So I'm I know a lot of some. shop owners, like, ah, you know, ah, ah, I could never sell it. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, I don't right. know how to run my own shop. And, you know, I don't know how to freaking push sticks, <laughs> even though that's what my job is. And, you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, let me tell you something. Like, there were 1,500 boxes there. Churchill's blew, yeah. blew out 10. And, wow. you know, and they're a small shop. They're, they're, they're yeah. you know, you know they're, they're a small shop compared to their, uh, you know, there are shops that have 600 facings and there's some shops that have 100 facings. Churchill's in that, is in that 100 facing category yeah. it is what it is but right. again turns and burn sticks turns and burn sticks turn this cash and carry business is ridiculous right so right. let alone the sit down lounge experience right cash and carry for that guy is just his business model right and then you have you know you have you have your seven eight people who are regulars during the day and then you have sure. your busy nights you know and whatnot but he's not surviving on events like other shops right. that have 600 facings on it, they're just surviving out events. Again, it's business model, right? You yeah. have to understand your customers and you have to understand your business. But like, yeah, he kept calling them and saying, "Can I have two more boxes?" And he was selling them like and like Johnny on the spot. And he got as many nice. as he could, and, and and he didn't get as many as he could and sit on them. He got as many as he could, and they were gone. You know, nice. like they like if we committed to a box, I was like, "Yeah, well, put put me down for one," right? And then I had like five sticks out of that repertoire here at the studio, and I called them like I don't know, making it up like the week later. I said, "Can you get another one?" Yeah, we'll put me down for another box. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean, and and, and 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 they're gone. They're gone. Like I have that for you. I have a I have a Drew section in my humidor that I've been compiling. Yeah. So that I can send you the, the next batch, and you know, hey, at least I'm organized about it, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you might have to fly here and pick it up yourself. But at least if, if you walked in the door tomorrow, you would have sticks. Like, I'll be, oh, Drew, uh, these are waiting for you. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, you might have to just do a round trip and just get them. It might be quicker. Anyway, right? So I put a couple right. aside because we've burned through the, we've burned through all 50 of them here, except for the, the couple I've, 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 I've put aside for you. Because I put aside for you because they're the 2019 batch, right? Nice. And I want to, Compare it to the 2020 batch. I've had 18 and 19. Okay. Let's do that. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. That's, that's the uh, HVC Cerro Toro. Uh, Cerro you, Toro. You, you, um, what's, yep. the, um, what's the rating you gave it again? I gave it a box split. I, box I, split. I shared, gotcha. I'd, I'd share it with a good friend. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're not They're not expensive. Six, uh, eight to nine bucks uh, at your uh, local brick and mortar. But other yep. than that... Uh, yeah, it's a. I, I like. I like this. I'm liking this brand. Yeah. Uh, just for you know already, and I'm just got introduced to it. So, uh, but yeah, they've been around since uh, I was like at their homepage right now. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you you're you're going exactly where I was going, but you yeah. su supply us with facts, and I'll supply you with statement. Yeah, and they're you know they're, so they're relatively you know uh, young company, mm -hmm. but but yeah, I mean they're 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 doing some great things, and um, so. Uh, they're sticking to that Cuban esque style yeah. uh, cigar, and so sticking to the traditions, and 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 then infusing their knowledge, their new knowledge is is going to win them over a lot of new um, cigar smokers for sure. Yeah, into their profile. Yeah, I think I, I'd love to get them on the show and yeah. talk business because I'm business wise, because you for, don't know this. for for business wise, um, my question would would be quite simple you're yeah. newer on the scene 
right? You don't have a, a, a history and heritage, but you do. Because yeah. where you're sitting geographically and who's rolling your stuff. You have, you have a history and a heritage. And by the way, you guys are doing a freaking phenomenal job there at HVC of protecting that history. Yeah. Rolling wise and construction wise and creativity of the stick. And uh, I'd like to have three conversations with them. Number one, anybody. Number two, the marketing person. And then yep. the potentially a roller as well. Because there, there, there would be three different conversations. You know? News, new, yeah, Newsflash to use. I already sent an email out to uh, have them on uh, to get with someone there and have them come on our show and yeah. talk about those things you specifically. Just said right now. Yeah, because so, it's yeah. like it's like amazing. But you know, it if is. they want to come, open mic. It'd be great to have them. You yeah. know, if you want to go on Facebook and be with other shows, that's fine too. <laughs> whichever way, which, whichever way you want to go. Yeah. Either, either way, I'm good. They already. You know? I've already, I've already been told they like our style, so we're good. A lot of people do like our style. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? Um. Oh, dude. Hoyo de Nicaragua, Antonio, Connecticut, uh -huh. Robusto. Uh -huh. I will repeat that because usually when you say Hoyo de Nicaragua, uh -huh. Antonio, you think, oh, my God, I have to eat. <laughs> 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 that is one hell of a strong stick. Well, yeah. they did it again with the Hoyo de Nicaragua, Antonio, Connecticut, Robusto. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Rapid Binder Filler. Well, your ra your filler and binder in Nicaragua, and your wrapper is Ecuadorian Connecticut. Um, I had the robusto. It is a uh, five by fifty two. Um, it's available in uh, four different sizes. I did have the um, the Toro, the six by fifty. Um, uh -huh. I did not have the Bellicoso, which is six by fifty four, and I did not have the Corona Gorda. Uh, five and one fourth by forty six because like not a lot of shops really carry this here in the northeast. Ironically, which I think is is weird, but I think they don't carry this particular stick because of the how many consumers like a freaking regular Hoya de Nicaragua Antonio strong ass stick, right? Right, right. But let me tell you something. This stick, like the retailers, you have got to come back and and call them up. Do what you got to do. Call the rep if you know him or her. And have them resend you some samples of this Connecticut. Because you get the strength of Hoya de Nicaragua Antonio with the um, earthiness and sweetness. And I would almost say it's like a sweet, like a zesty sweet. Maybe yeah. like, uh, like, like kind of lemon- Citrus, like if someone were to take a freaking fruit, like a, a lemon or an orange or maybe a grapefruit and like spray it in your face and you're like, <laughs> I, I won't do that again, right? Sorry for the visual, right? But it's spray, <laughs> spray it in your face and do that, dude. That's the type of zestiness that you get from the Connecticut balance and the strength of, of what Antonio has to offer. Dude, at the end, you get a nice, meaty, awesome, leathery, complex Connecticut cigar. Right. Box-worthy all day. Box-worthy yeah. all day long. Um, you know, it, I don't know why shops don't pounce on this. It got pretty decent ratings as well, the Connecticut. I'm not surprised. The Antonio's good. It's yeah. just, you know, if you and I... Pre-COVID times, I could fly down to Texas. We're gonna have a guy's day out, and we're gonna go out for breakfast. I'm not gonna start with the Antonio. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like it, it's one of the, you, you need a full stomach. It's a strong cigar. There you go. The Hoya de yeah. Nicaragua Antonio is very strong. The Connecticut, I can do on an empty stomach. It's fine. It's very complex. Um, I think it's one of those sticks. If I could fast forward three or four years from now. And yeah. we wind, you know, get into a Story Geeks time machine and, and do that there. 
I yeah. can tell you that when we talk about we, I mean the whole industry, even though the podcast talk about like like the complex Connecticut movement, there is one, right? Yeah. I talked oh, about yeah. I talked about like the Nicaraguan boom movement three years ago, right? With market share and all of that. I've been talking about it since twenty fourteen, even on my cigar radio right. show, right? And, and and I've been talking about like the Nicaraguan movement movement. How I think like the consumers really want that spicy profile. They're really flocking yeah. towards it. When we fast forward years later to the quote unquote whatever we come up with in the industry or whatever other people come up with in the industry and we critique about when we talk about a Connecticut complex Connecticut stronger Connecticut's that un, unlike what other Connecticut's are, are known for. This will yeah. be one of the sticks that they mentioned in the top five. No question. Right. Like, if you're looking for complex Connecticut, and what I mean by that, I'll take a little bit of time if you're new to Stogie Geeks and whatnot because our numbers are growing, so I always try to digress and not assume we're talking to the same audience, right? The right. Um, complex Connecticut is basically, if a cigar was a Connecticut, it's Connecticut or Connecticut, Connecticut. Connecticut is um, lighter shade, Right. Connecticut, Connecticut is from the actual state of Connecticut, right? And so when you're looking at that historically for years, for centuries now, a lighter shade cigar is going to smoke a barely medium profile. But right, right now, there's this, hey, I'm going to throw this Nicaraguan tobacco binder and filler in and wrap it around a Connecticut. And you're coming up because of the complexity of the Nicaraguan soil as opposed yeah. to a Honduran or a Dominican soil, because of yeah. the complexity of that, you're going to get like a complex flavor than what historically profile Connecticut's are known for. There you go. Now you have the right. definition. So, dude, I honestly think, like if, like I said, if we were to fast forward and do a complex Connecticut review, this will be in the top five. As far as a holy crap, it's so good. Have you had it, Yeah. Joe? I have not had that. I've seen it. I've seen it. Matter of fact, I know we have that in our shop. Uh, I just haven't got around to getting into it. And who has uh, not turned you on to that? That see, that's I, me. <laughs> that's me. Because I go, I go in my own humidor at, at the shop, and I, you know, and I just start picking up things that I list a hit list that I have. But I just, I just jotted it down now. Yeah. And now, dude. I will. Have it's that on, stick within a week. Like, have that stick oh, yeah. within a week. Like, if, especially if you have readily access to it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It's not hard to get. It's in regular production. I just it here is. in the Northeast, it's kind of like, you know, and, and, and I think it's because it has that, that Antonio name of yeah. holy strength. But, <laughs> but you're, you're, you're definitely hitting it on the hammer on that Connecticut, uh, you know, the rap and, and the Connecticut leaf because. A lot of people, a lot of people ask me, "Oh, you know, isn't that a medium cigar?" But like, no, man. I mean, when you start looking at the binder and the filler and some of the cigars that are out there, uh, you you start to really get into those complexities, uh, as you were just stating about the Antonio now. Yep. Uh, but yeah, a, a, a lot of people, you know, um, you know, like Steve Saka's line, you know, you know, he's got the Connecticut uh, shade wrapper. Uh, on his sticks, uh, creme brulee, and things of that nature. Um, but man, the complexity of the of the tobaccos that are, in, in, you know, um, that are held inside that that uh, uh, outer wrapper, it's phenomenal. Yep. So yeah, now, yeah. just like accounting, right? Uh -huh. Just like accounting, if you have a debit, you have a credit, right? Mm -hmm. It goes on the other side, too. Yeah. So the Maduros are actually yes. starting to make a movement. To become historically lighter. Yeah. Now, we could do a whole nother episode as if it's a spray on Maduro or if it's a true Maduro and yeah. and all of that stuff. That's another episode for another time, right? Yeah. But when you're talking about that, so just like you have the complex Connecticut the Connecticut's that are oh sorry, right? I'm all opposite, right? The Connecticut's <laughs> that are raising the bar in the spicy profile. You yeah. have the Maduros that are up here historically, and they're lowering the bar in the strength profile and getting into taste. And then you have right. tasty Maduros. So don't be surprised. You know, I would say in six months from now, but it's COVID times. In a year from now, we're yeah. on Story Geek saying, 
dude, it's a non-complex Maduro, <laughs> or it's a <laughs> it's a non-full-bodied Maduro, or, or you right. know what I mean? Like, like because 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 you 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 have both sides of the coin that are trying to trying to again. It's all about market share. Yeah, we talk about story geek. All we're having doing is having a conversation about market share, regardless of the regardless of you want to admit it or not, right? I mean, right. you know, I mean, <laughs> you watch any news media you talk about retail stores wearing a mask, not wearing a mask. Hey, come to our place. We have a mandatory mask thing. Makes you feel safe. Why? You grab market. Yep. Share. You grab market share. That's it. Like that's <laughs> that's the reason why. Like you know <laughs> what I mean? You grab market share. That's what it's all about. Because in this business, you get paid for first place. Of that day. So in other words, if you walk into a cigar shop and you know what the number is in your head, $5, $20, $100, $200, whatever, it's a gift, $300, whatever it is, you have a number in your head of what you're going to spend, the consumer. You got to get first place for that day. How do you get first place for that day? That's how you run your business. That's how you run your cigar business, whether you are the retailer or whether you're the manufacturer. At the end of the day, that's what it is. So that's why I think it's super cool because now the creativity component is starting to blossom. Yeah. You know, it's like a tipsy top. Everybody says, oh, my God, I feel like I'm in bizarro world or opposite world. You know, Connecticut's a strong. We're going to be like 10 years from now. Remember when Connecticut's were weak and Maduro's were strong and now Maduro's are weak and Connecticut's are strong or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, that is where... And when I look at companies that are looking to achieve that, I turn around and go, they get it. Yeah. They get it. They get the business. Because it's all about experimentation. You can't be a flat company who hasn't produced something from 2012, even though you got high rates in 2012, and still survive. Yeah. The consumers don't want that. And if you don't believe me, look at the craft beer industry. Look at the wine industry. Right? I just heard, I don't know, I'm... some actress has now bought like a wine vineyard and whatnot. What the hell does that mean? What market share? <laughs> it's market share or tax write off, but market share, right? Right. It's market share and, and it's business. And and you know, I was amazed that when I had Cigar Club Radio that George Clooney did a tequila. Yeah. Cosmigos. Yeah. Right? Did a whole freaking thing on Cosmigos, did a whole radio show on Cosmigos. I know it's Cosmigos is not that. and I was like, hmm. That's weird, because in the back of my mind, as the Cosmigos rep is describing the profile, which is tough to do on regular terrestrial radio, because you have FCC regulations, and you can't say, go get it at 125 Main Street. Right. You can talk about the concept of alcohol and the blends of alcohol, but you can't talk about drinking alcohol. That's weird, right? Okay, (laughs) right? Trust me, I had to take a a law test in order to be an approved uh, radio host on that. That's a tough. That's a tough path to follow, right? I want you to do a show about cigars, but you can't talk about them. Okay. Can't talk about. <laughs> right? Interesting. So, but but yeah. anyway, so I learned. We talked about the history and heritage and this and that and, and the blends and the amount of agave used for this and what's the difference between blanco and this and that and and, and agave tequila and there's another right. silver tequila and is there a gold? I don't know if there's gold. I think Platinum. it was three. Platinum. Platinum. They, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you would know. You're in Texas. You, you, you're, you're, you're closer to the border than I am, right? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, and, and you talk about all, all, all of that stuff, and it's like, wow, man, like, that's, that's crazy information, right? And in the back of my mind, I'm being historically educated. I'm digging it because, you know, I'm a little bit of a geek with that stuff, spirits, craft beers, right. cigars. And I'm thinking... Same. What the hell does George Clooney know about freaking tequila? <clears throat> you know it's I mean? like Peyton Manning. If Peyton anything, Manning's you know the him. guy on Once Upon a Time in Mexico, that Mexican guy who had all the tattoos? You know the actor? You got a visual, right? Yeah, Mexican guy. He's in all the Danny freaking... Danny Trejo? What? Danny Trejo? I, that's his name. Yeah. Thank you. Because yeah, I don't Trejo. watch movies, but I, I watch yeah. a few, right? Um, matter of fact, the newest movie I just watched was, was Joker. People are like you finally oh. saw that. I'm like, yeah, dude. I don't watch movies like in my life. I just, I don't. <laughs> I really don't have two hours to sit down and 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 allocate to 
freaking yeah. movie night. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? My my family is very fascinated by what Joe Hosempa does. <laughs> I can tell that's you. Right. They don't need TV. That's the worst. That's the most paid bill I pay in the house. It's useless. We don't watch TV. That much TV. <laughs> you know, we do for the little guys, Elmo and all of that stuff. But freaking, right. you know, we, we uh, you know, we're, we're, we need to, you know, why play Guitar Hero when you can learn guitar? Right. There you go. <laughs> you know? So anyway, um, that's it, Drew. We, we've that's gone it. through our cigars. That's been a, a thing. Any Anything you want to wrap up on? No, pretty much, you know, just looking forward to next week. I think we got some things coming up, right? We got a couple of interviews coming up. Oh, uh, I can look. Some... I look. No, we do, we do, we do. We it's do. a blur. No, nah, it's a blur. No, it's good, it's good. It's good. It's right. no, we do. I should know we that. We got, we, my got some, we got some interesting guests coming on here soon. Oh, yeah, uh, next week we have Enrique yeah, from 1502 so. Cigars or Global yeah. Premium Cigars. And Yeah, so we got him coming up. And have you had 1502 Cigars? I have, yeah. Yeah. Had some good, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? Off the top good. of your head. Good, 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 good product. Good uh, consistency. Uh, I haven't had, uh, you know, a bunch of them, but I've, ha I've had them. So yeah. Um, I'm excited uh, because I'm. Uh, if you ask me today, what's today's date? Seventeenth. Yeah, July seventeenth. I'd say I'm Emerald Ruby, but yeah. I'm going back four years. I need to get into some of the new stuff this week. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I need to get into some of the new stuff this week. Like, that's that's still geek homework. So I will be, I'll be in between my blue bonnets. <laughs> yeah, which um, I have a blue bonnet addiction. I can't lie. You know what? Uh, I will say this. <laughs> I I have noticed now with my time because I have I have some drive time now that I'm in search this weekend of getting me a bunch of different Lanceros because. I, you know, like my Robustos, I, I just, I, I waste them because by the time I get to work, it's a 20 minute drive for me now to work versus an eight minute drive I had before. So, uh, but yeah, so now instead of having dog walkers, now I'm, I, I need to get into, I need to just up my Lancero, uh, uh, purchases. <laughs> I'm going to give you some advice, Stogie Geeks, and I'm going to leave you with this. Okay. When you are driving in your car and you smoke a Lancero, Drew, pay attention. Ah, uh -huh. all right. I don't do well. First of all, do you have the cigar ashtray in your car, or do you? Oh, yeah. do, you're okay. Okay. Oh, if yeah, you I do, if you do the cigar ashtray in your car, okay, right in front of the AC, and you're in a hundred degree <laughs> weather, okay. Do not take your cigar. Let's. I uh, need a. Oh, here's an ashtray. Oh. Pretend this is smaller, okay? Like a cup size, right? I'm not going to do my cup because that's yeah. gross. And I'm enjoying the wine, right? If this was a smaller cigar and you do the thing, do and let's just say like in front of this, this component here is the AC, do okay. not flick your ashes like this like you would normally do in a shop, okay? What you do... This is very important. You go as close as you can to the top, okay, with your fingers. Do not pinch, and you should start to feel a warming sensation. Once yeah. you feel that warming sensation, you know you're in the right spot, okay? Boy, if you're listening on audio. Anyway, right, <laughs> then you proceed to go across the AC and do your thing because yeah. – if you don't, you're going to go, shook, and it's going to go, shook, <laughs> and yeah. you're going to be like, oh, oh, <laughs> while you're driving, yeah. that makes it hard to stay in your lane, and then there you go. So there you go. I have done that. I can't tell you how many countless times where I, I'm smoking, I'm driving, and I sit all the way back, and I drive a truck, so I, uh, my, 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 my truck. And of course you drive a truck. Some, you live in Texas. Yeah, like you're man. gonna get like you're gotta, gonna gotta get in anything like you're gonna get in anything besides an SUV or a truck. That's right. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that vent I'll forget to move it, or my wife has moved it, and I'll go and next Oof. thing I know, I got I got ash all over the place. I get to work. First thing I do is I got a little AC. You know, like, you know, one, uh, I, well, I got that can, that air can. You know that can air oh my that you use God. for your computers yeah, that yeah. dust. No. I, and I dust my and I spray myself with that, and it just kind of blows the ash away from my clothes. 
I carry. Okay, let me tell you something about my life. Okay, I carry my cigars in in in, in a plastic bag, right? Um, yeah. I use computers to make a living, right? Yeah. I don't have candy in the computer. If it gets too dusty and the keyboard's there, then the business needs to get a new computer. <laughs> 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 I just I can't do it. Like, you know what I mean? I just don't, you know. But anyway, I'm not a gadget geek like you, which is why I, I, I look forward to next week's gadget. I'm prepared. I'm always prepared. I got lint roll. I got, man, my, my glove box has so much crap in it. You have a lint roller? I got a lint roller, yeah. yeah in case man. you get a little... You know, dog hair, lint, whatever, you know. Man. <laughs> okay. You got <laughs> you to right. you gotta what? You got to stay what? You know, got to stay, uh, you know, dust-free, uh, dog hair-free. You know, I have my Dodger by Red Healer. He, he He's shedding right now. So, yeah, it's been. And then on top of that, my cigar ash every once in a while does get blown into the cabinet of my truck. Because and you so- don't, if you cup it. If you cup yeah. it, right? You cup it like like that, right? And then yeah. you go, you gotta go, whoo, 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 like a ninja. Yeah, you gotta be like a cigar I'll, ninja. I'll try that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because what'll happen, especially on a Lancero, is that when that AC's kicking, because you you know you're dealing with hundreds of degrees down there in Texas, that's gonna fray the wrapper. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And then there you go. So, story yeah. geeks, what have we learned today? Virtual is coming soon to some, uh, not conferences. What are they called? Conventions? Cigar? Conventions. Things? Yeah. Uh, don't forget your lint brush. And remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Go to stogiegeeks.com. Email joe h at stogiegeeks.com or drew at stogiegeeks.com. Behind every cigar, I want to remind you there is a story worth knowing. Get out there and shop with your local brick and mortar. Check them out. Make sure you wear a mask. Make sure you stay safe. I want to say thank you for Drew for joining us yet again from yep. Texas. Special thank you to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, and Placencia Cigars. We are the Stogie Geeks. We'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>